Hey folks, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you how to use Mixbus compression. Moving on with Mixbus processing here, today we're talking about Mixbus compression, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your skills as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and explore mix bus compression. Let me play you the track as it stands here. So in the previous video on mix bus processing, uh, we talked about console emulation. So we have our raw tracks balanced here. So these are the raw recorded tracks for this session. No plugins on any of them yet, uh, not even mixed. So this is an unmixed track. We don't have the vocals in, just our instrumental is up here. And we got our console shaper on our mix bus here. Drive is all the way down. Next thing we're doing here with our mix bus processing is getting our mix bus compressor in place. Now the settings I'm going to use here on the Mixbus compressor will work just as well on a stock compressor. I'm going to reach for an SSL style bus compressor, but any compressor you use will work just fine uh, with these same settings here. So I'm going to pull in the fat channel here inside of Studio One, and I'm going to pull in the Brit Comp, which is their SSL style bus compressor. But let me play you here before I turn this on, before we get any kind of saturation from this, let me play you where we're standing here with the mix. Now, if you're opting not to use the console emulation like we did in the previous video, that is completely fine. Before you throw on your mix bus compressor, what you wanna do beforehand is go through and get a balance of your tracks here. Now, if you're more experienced with mix bus compression, if you're more experienced as an engineer, then you can get your compressor in beforehand. Because I've used this compressor so much on so many of my mixes, I do put it in beforehand, so I mix through my mix bus compressor rather than setting my levels and then putting the compressor on. So if you're working this way here, what you want to do, get your levels set, put your mix bus compressor on, and then you can go back and tweak your levels one more time here. So things are sounding good here. So far with our console shaper in, we're going to throw our mix bus compressor in. We're going to hear how it kind of changes our track. It'll change your balances a little bit. And if you're using something like this, like an SSL style bus compressor or the FG Red or whatever, it'll give you a little bit of analog vibe as well that you'll have to go back and tweak tonally inside your mix with your faders here. So once you get your rough mix set, throw your mix bus compressor here on your mix bus. These are the settings I'm going to use here on the Brit Comp or the SSL style bus compressor. I'm gonna go two to one ratio. We wanna be very, very gentle because again, we're affecting the entire mix here. It's not just one track, it's all of the tracks, all the faders inside our mix here. Now for attack, I'm gonna go a 30 millisecond attack here. So slowest attack because we wanna make sure we don't squash any of the transients on our drums or our bass, or we don't like really clamp down on our vocals or anything as well. Release, I'm gonna go fastest release here. If you're using the SSL style bus compressor, you can always go up to auto too. I've never felt comfortable with the auto. I've never got it to work the way I want it to. I always like using the 100 millisecond uh, release. And it's the same settings I've used uh, when I did use the stock compressor here inside of Studio One as well. I'm gonna pull the makeup gain all the way down and we're gonna pull our threshold down here. For me, I usually have it set at let's see here, negative 1.6, and that gives me the amount of compression that I want uh, on my mix bus here. So we're gonna start all the way up though, and I'm gonna pull the threshold down till we get the amount of compression I want on the mix here.
so we ended up right where right where I usually have it set in my template, the negative 1.6 on the threshold. You can see we're doing about two to three dB of compression here on the entire mix. And if you watch one more time when I hit play here, our meter, our needle is moving right in time with our track. That's what we want. That's why I love these attack and release settings so much. The attack being this slow allows for our track to breathe before the compressor clamps down and the fastest release makes sure our compressor lets go before our track goes back in for that next downbeat or that next big hit there. So let me hit play one more time. Take a listen, and I'll A-B the compressor, but you can see what our me meter is doing as well as it dances kind of in time with the track. Compression's feeling good. Let's add some makeup gain here before we actually talk about the effects of the compressor here. We'll go up to a dB of makeup gain. We'll see what that gives us. That's feeling good volume-wise in and out of the compressor. So we're doing that two to three dB of compression on our entire mix with our SSL style bus compressor. I'm gonna AB it one more time here and I want you to pay attention and notice what changes for our mix. So volume-wise as well as frequency or tone-wise in our mix as I AB the compressor here. We're gonna start with it in, then I'm gonna take it out, we'll kick it back in. Pay attention to how our mix changes so far. You can hear it really glues all of the elements of our mix together, tightens everything up a little bit. You especially hear it, I especially hear it on the kick drum, how things get tighter. It feels more focused, feels less loose, feels more polished, right? One more time here, pay attention to how everything kind of glues together. Without the mix bus compressor in, everything kind of feels like its own instrument. We have some depth that we got from the council shaper, but you can kind of still hear it's all kind of just random pieces of the mix pulled up. As we kick the, kick the mix bus compressor in, excuse me, we're doing cohesive compression on the entire mix. So everybody in the mix is getting the same two to three dB, two to three dB of compression, which helps bring everything together and help it feel like one song instead of a bunch of different faders. Take a listen one more time without and then with here. tightens up our mix, and glues all of our elements together. Now, like I said before, if you're working this way where you build your balance, then put your mix bus compressor in, you wanna go back and tweak your balance so it works better with the mix bus compressor. You can't just throw the compressor on, do the amount of compression you want, and call it a day. You gotta go back and make sure your mix works with the compressor rather than just making sure your compressor is working on the mix. You want them to work together, not have one working on the other. So we're gonna go back now, rebuild our balance here with our mix bus compressor in place. So we're gonna start here with our kick drum.
You can see how we tweaked things, right? Added a little bit more low end here, or low end weight coming from this snare high mic, which is a condenser mic on our snare drum, just to balance it better with the kick drum. Pulled up our toms a little bit, our overheads a little bit, same thing with our room mic here, or both room mics as a matter of fact. Kicked up our bass just a touch so it sits better with our kick drum, and we're not losing so much of that low end from our compression. Same thing with our guitars. Pulled our guitars up just a touch to balance them better with the drums. We got a lot of tightening on our drums from the mix bus compressor. We want to make sure it works on the entire mix, not just on our drums there. Everything's working a little bit better together now that we've redone our balance here. So let's AB our mix bus compressor one more time here now that we've reconstructed our balance to work with the compressor, not just so our compressor's working on the mix here. So we'll start with I'll take it out and kick it back in here. You can hear without the mix bus compressor, everything feels separate. Everything feels like it's working by itself. Once we kick the mix bus compressor in here, well, I can't say mix bus compression today. Once we kick the mix bus compressor in here, it glues everything together. It forces all of our individual tracks to work as one cohesive song rather than all of these individual faders. That is the benefit of mix bus compression. It can tighten up your track, give it some focus, and definitely give it some cohesion. So it feels like a song rather than a bunch of individual faders. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF. It's gonna walk you through the entire mixing process to help you get more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video.